Hi, and welcome to this video where I'm going to show off the latest version of Ministry of Flats fully automated UVM wrapper. So this is version 3.4.2. So it's the latest version as of the time recording. Uh, it's probably going to be better if you're watching in the future as the software is constantly being developed. So I'm going to show you some models and I'm going to start with an Overwatch character. So you can see this character here. Um, you can see it's a pretty fast unwrapper, uh, but the goal here is actually to try to replicate what a human UV unwrapper would do. So you can see all the parts are laid out quite nicely. It's following the edge uh, X and Y. It has found the, the front part of it and made that um, symmetric. Um, you can try another model. Here's a siege tank. You can see uh, when we check it out that um, the Texels are directed to follow the geometry. So even though this barrel of this tank is pointing upwards, the um, texels are following that direction. Now that makes packing a lot easier and, and more efficient, but it also makes texture painting a lot better. Because if you paint this edge, for instance, you want to paint in the direction of the pixels. Otherwise, you get a lot of jaggies, especially if you have low, low resolution textures. We actually take advantage of that a lot. So for instance, you can see here, there's a slight distortion. That's actually added distortion so that we can follow the edges better where the hard edges are, where we want to have uh, textures that follow the direction of the geometry. So uh, there's a lot of special cases for that. So if you look at something like a, you know, a simple torus, uh, this unwrapping you know, turns out to be a perfect unwrap. Now, obviously, it introduces um, stretching because you get more textural resolution in the inner side and in the outer side, but it's still using the maximum amount of, of texture. And um, it also takes care to do things like, you know, it needs to cut it up somewhere. So it cuts it up in the innermost span so that you get the least visible um, seam. So you can try something else like a teapot and you will see the same thing that it's actually found the geometry of the shape and try to unwrap it to maximize for that. Um, so this is much closer to what a human being would do than what most algorithms would do. Um, you can see uh, on some other models, I can show you a pair of headphones. Uh, these are fairly you know, low poly, but once we unwrap them, we can see that the algorithm has truly deconstructed the shape and how it was made in order to maximize the, the use of the texture, but also get all the straight lines following the, the, the X and Y axes um, so that you, you know, get really nice texture borders. So moving on, you can look at a more complicated object. So this is a Navy P rifle. So you can see here the scope, for instance, has been unwrapped. And we have a single seam that is hidden under the scope. Uh, but you can also see, when we unwrap it here, the sides of the rifle. Now, the sides of the rifles are flat, but there's a bunch of uh, soft surfaces around them. And what it's done is actually preserved that, that hard flat surface and made that a projection and then from that built up the smooth surfaces around it. And that sort of causes it to have a, almost no wrapping uh, at all in, in the important parts of the, of the rifle. So uh, next I'm going to show you a knife model. Um, now this um, shows um, you know simple knife but there's some special things I want you to, to take care to see here. You can actually see that um, the shape here is quite pointy and uh, it is actually stretched together the texture a little bit to give you a little bit more texture resolution. Um, so you can see that the, the blade has a slightly different shape in the UV map and that's just because we're using more of our texture that way. Uh, you can also see a slight fault in this one which is there is a cut over here um, and that's because the uh, algorithm was not able to figure out what is a hard edge and what's a soft edge. Now, all the demos I do here, 
uh, the algorithm itself decides what's a hard edge and what's a soft edge. And it's generally very, very good at doing that. It's much better than any automated uh, tools you'll find in your content creation pipeline. But if you have uh, defined what is a hard edge or a soft edge, it might be defined as normals or a smooth group, depending on the lingo of the application you're using. You can actually go into setting and say use normals, and you will get a better result in general. Uh, but since most models don't have well-created normals, by default, it's turned off. So I'm going to keep it off um, for the remainder of this demo. Uh, in the settings, you can also find uh, texture resolution. So texture resolution uh, decides what kind of gaps you get between your uh, islands so you don't get overbleeds. Uh, there's a special option for separating hard edges. That's if you're doing light mapping. Uh, there is overlap identical parts and overlap uh, mirrored parts. I generally don't um, think that people should use those because they're generally not as efficient or they're too efficient. Uh, so people don't really get what they want, um, but they're there if you want them. Um, so uh, next, I'm going to show you a car model. So here is a the body of a car. You can see it looks like this. So some of the things I want you to note here is that the roof and the, the bonnet is completely straight. So it's it's very mirrored, it, it's symmetric, which is really nice when you're painting it, it doesn't get rotated or anything like that. There's a lot of little trims on this model. You can see under the arches and things like that. And if you look at the UV, you can see that all of those have been straightened out. So there's straight lines here. And that means that they take almost no space when it comes to packing. They're very efficient and they become really easy to paint and you don't get jaggies uh, when you paint them. And that's sort of an example of a lot of the sort of special cases uh, that I take care uh, to handle. So one of those I want to show you is this model. So this is a sort of a test model, but it's a frame and it's a quad surface on top of that frame. And you can tell that the quad is larger than the whole of the frame, right? So what, what it does is that it actually scales down this inner island in order to fit it into the hole to do a better packing. So no, most packing algorithms would basically say, well, uh, this big thing is too big to fit in a hole, so we can't use it, we can't put it in there. Uh, but this one actually has some leeway, so it says, well, it's almost uh, small enough to fit, so let's make it small. So if we actually go into the uh, debug settings and we turn off the scale to fit, um, we can do that and see what would happen. Um, we get something like this, where um, th this one has to be outside, and now we're having a lot of texture space that are not used. Um, so this is just an example of the many, many special cases um, that that it handles. I'm going to turn this back on. Generally, there's a lot of stuff in the in the debug menu, and you should not use any of it. If you touch anything here, it's likely to either be slower or worse or both. So, uh, but it's kind of useful for, for just debugging. So uh, I'm going to show you uh, an example of that, which is a very simple model of an LED. So this is an LED. Uh, this is super low poly, um, but these uh, sticks are really long. They're a single polygon. You can't cut them apart. So uh, this would be a really bad uh, UV unwrap if you didn't do some stretching. So you can see there's actually some stretching going on here that have actually made these a little shorter. And it doesn't make them shorter. It actually makes everything else larger. And that, you know, when we show this, you can see we get pretty good coverage. And also you can see the underside has been stretched out to use up more space uh, because essentially it's free space. So um, it, it makes sense to use the space available. So uh, this is all sort of a handmade stuff, but you can also do like very arbitrary geometry. So I'm going to show you uh, some cloth. So this is a draped piece of cloth. And you can see when we unwrap it, it pretty much figured out exactly that it used to be a square thing. So this is a really hard example. 
And if you think this is a grid, it's not. I can actually bring up Cinema 4D. You can see here is the mesh. So it's it's just a polygon soup. And you have different sizes of polygons and all that jazz. So it still handles this quite well. Um, you can also uh, use this for things like scanned models that are not structured. If your model is structured, is if it was made by a human, uh, this algorithm will look for hints to that. But if it's not, it will still handle you know the model just fine. Um, so the really nice thing about that is that you can take a complex thing, um, like this character that has smooth surfaces and hard surfaces and all kinds of different geometry, and it will just handle all of it. Like there's no special case. You don't have to tell it. You know, this is, I want you to use this algorithm here or that algorithm there. Uh, there's over 25 different ways it does UV unwrapping with a bunch of, you know, sub options be between those. So there's a lot of intelligence going into to handle a, a complex model. And of course, um, you can do it on larger models. So I can bring in, you know, a Titan from Titanfall. Uh, which, um, you know, is a significant mesh. This mesh has a full innard with a cockpit and all that stuff. And, you know, in less than four seconds, it's done this, which, you know, would have taken a long time to do by hand. And, of course, it's a computer, so it uses the same precision, the same skill, whether it's many polygons or fewer polygons, so it doesn't get tired or anything like that. So that's my um, showing of the current version. Uh, this is now available. You can license it. So you can go to uh, ministerialflat.com and inquire about a license. There's licenses for freelancers, for larger studios, and also custom licenses. If you're using Cinema 4D, it's already available since version 22. So just fire that up. Um, Maxon has licensed this algorithm. Um, so that's really it. Uh, thank you for watching.